Hello everyone, uh, my name is Kevin Larsen and I work as uh, Head of Business Intelligence and Analytics at Fasis Abbe Baller. And I'm here to share my experience of modernizing Baller's data estate. And this is based on a vision that was established in the late 2020, so it's only one year ago, uh, with the aim of revolutionizing the way we approach this data management and become a more data-driven organization. And this by providing our stakeholders with um, actionable and trustable insights um, so we can create the ultimate customer experience and the highest potential business value for the company. And what distinguishes us as a company is partly the fact that we act within the real estate industry, uh, but also how we choose to operate um, and manage our business, uh, which I will be focusing on during this presentation, together with uh, data management. So before that, let me just give you a quick brief of Baller as a company, since some of you may not um, have heard of it before. Uh, as I mentioned, we are a real estate company. Uh, we were founded in 2005, and we currently have around uh, 1,500 1, properties. Uh, they are mainly in the Nordics, but also in other European countries, such as uh, Den uh, Germany, Great Britain, but also Greece uh, recently. We have around 60,000 tenants, uh, renting an area of around 4.8 million square meters. And our total property value is around 16.5 billion euros, which is managed by around 850 employees within the organization. So what's interesting with real estate industry is that we have all different kinds of properties. We have properties that are over 100 years old and some that we are currently building. And this creates some challenges when it comes to data and connecting them to different kinds of prop tech devices, sensors, and so forth. Uh, we also have different kinds of properties for different kinds of usage. So if we take these pictures as an example, we have properties for commercial uh, usage. We have supermarkets, hotels, uh, large and small buildings for residential purposes. Uh, for example, the building in the middle, uh, which is called Kala Tunet, uh, which we are currently building together with a company called Saneke in Gothenburg, uh, which will be the highest building in the Nordics when it's finished. Uh, what's also interesting with the real estate industry is that in many ways we are a pretty analog industry. And this is something that we would like to change. And we do not just compare ourselves with other real estate companies, but also other kinds of industries. So for example, when we look at sales and marketing, we also find um, different kind of things in other industries, such as the um, yeah, other kinds of industries that we can take knowledge from. And in addition to this, we have a different kind of management model. So we are totally investment oriented. So we have no budgets, and this makes all different kinds of uh, projects, initiatives, uh, and so forth, totally investment oriented. So we want to create the highest potential business value in everything we do. And one of these initiatives is to create a modern data state so we can find a place for the data to live. And this is pretty much like setting up a new property where you want to have a stable platform to stand on uh, with the right structure and conditions uh, and be able to build upon that. Um, so as I mentioned, we started this journey for um, one year ago. And one of the first thing was to identify our relevant stakeholders for this initiative. We quickly realized that we have all different kinds of uh, shareholders, uh, both internally but also externally in form of uh, shareholders, customers and suppliers. So here are some form of shareholders uh, 
for example, our operations in property development and property management, but also human resources, marketing, and so forth. And also, one other example is energy, where we want to be able to measure our water and energy consumption, uh, sensors from different kinds of um, digital locks, and so forth. One year ago, we also set some kind of roadmap, what we would like to do in the next years. So last year, we were trying to define what was the mission and vision with this project, and also trying to find the gaps of our old version of the data platform and what we want to build in the future. Currently, in 2021, we have um, actually migrated our old platform to, to the clouds and starting on a modern data estate. And um, also trying to find different ways of measuring the business in a completely different manner. And in the next couple of two years, we also want to add all these different kinds of product devices, um, sensors and so forth to the data platform. Um, but also starting with different kinds of um, predictive and proactive analytics. And we also have a mission and objective to uh, create a platform where every kind of stakeholders can access the data. Um, so it's not just internally, but also be able to provide insights to our suppliers and customers. So as I mentioned, the mission is to make our stakeholders more data-driven. And in order to do that, we as an organization and the individuals in this organization needs to align and work together with applied technology. And first of all, the organization must align and not only base their decisions on intuitions, but also on data. And I think that the way to do that is to be transparent in everything we do and to uh, democratize data in the entire organization. Uh, when we have done this, we can also uh, change the routines and processes uh, in the organization and adapt the shapes accordingly with the technology. And I believe this is how you by involving the organization in all different kinds of processes. This is the way they get curious and ask new kinds of questions, which creates business cases, uh, which make us able to uh, take the next step in the analytics um, maturity. However, we have to start small and think big. Um, we can't move to predictive and prescriptive analytics overnight. So in order to do this, I think we need to have a uh, think big in the beginning to create a sustainable platform that is flexible and scalable, but start small with smaller projects and trying to deliver this uh, customer experience and uh, potential uh, business value in the cases. Um, and I believe the first step in any kind of change is that we have to define why we need to make the change and who it will serve. And in this case, we have partly the people of the organization, but also the business management as key stakeholders of this project. Uh, we also have one other component in this equation that is IT and technology. But in order for us to get ahead of this journey, we believe that we have to start with the people and the business management and trying to find the right, right IT and technology according to these needs. So you can have the best IT and technology in the world, but if no one uses it and, and understand why, why they're using it, then I believe it's, it's meaningless. So in order to align this, we have structured the organization and a department we call DITA, which stands for Digitalization, IT and Business Development, which makes a, more, a lot more sense in Swedish as the last word is Safashi Um and the reason behind this is that we want all different kinds of projects to have a close relationship to the business. So depending on its uh, IT project, a digitalization project, it must have a close relationship to the business. Uh, 
And this is also why the data analytics team is a part of the business development. We have also initiated a, a group called the Business Intelligence Council, uh, which has members in various interest groups. And they are responsible for policy uh, streamlining the business requirements from the organization, but also prioritizing these initiatives together with the management group. And if we have different kinds of uh, system requirements or that we have to adapt and change our different kinds of routines, for example, they also have contact and make different kinds of system requirements with our different uh, system owners. And in the bottom here, we have the data analytics team that is responsible for, together with the BI Council, to create the technology needed to support the business in this case. So when we approached the organization, we saw that we have many different kinds of challenges. Uh, here are some points that we call social, socio-technical, and technical challenges. The first one is that, um, an example of that is that some people may be protagonistic when it comes to their data. They want, don't want to share it with others. And this does not align with data democratization, in many cases, at least. We also have the social technical aspect that um, many people are afraid of new technology and what, how that will affect their work. And I believe that we need to find the sweet spot of combining the intuition and knowledge of our competent uh, colleagues with the benefits of data, often referred to as augmented intelligence. And we also have the fact that we continuously um, gaining a lot more data and connecting to different kinds of systems. Uh, so we need also have a high risk of information overload. And this is also something that we need to approach. And of course, we have some technical challenges uh, that we need different kinds of routines and technology to support data management, data governance, and so forth, but also um, that we need to have a platform that is able to scale. Um, so the way we have approached these challenges is both by uh, change management and data management. And I think these two are aligned and must be worked on continuously and simultaneously. So I will start with change management, where we have identified three bullet points, uh, that is culture, mindset, trust, and data literacy. So first of all, we have to create a culture and a mindset in the organization so that people understand the benefits of data and how they can use it to optimize their work. We also have to create trust in order for them to actually trust the solutions we are providing. And we have to increase the data literacy uh, by continuously educating the people, um, also adapting the presentation and visualizations depending on the end users uh, and the purpose of the analysis. Uh, and also involving all the different kinds of stakeholders in the business requirement process. So these change management activities are correlated with the data management uh, bullet points that is presented here, which are just some examples. But we have uh, quality control, for example, to present one single source of truth. Uh, that, so we have to con con continuously evaluating and validating the data so it can be trusted. We also have data enrichment that we, in some cases, has to transform the data to make it fit the business needs. Uh, KPI definition uh, to create a catalog of unified K KPIs so all different departments speak the same language. We also have master data management, which is to identify and maintain accountability for the data and data governance to implement different kinds of techniques and processes to uh, ensure things like security and uh, accessibility. And these different kinds of actions regarding to both data management and change management calls for different kinds of changes in organizational structures, routines, but also in the technology. 
So moving to the technical aspects, we identified some key success factors when it comes to the uh, data platform that we wanted to establish. The first thing was that we wanted a data lake so we can extract raw data and um, actually doing ad hoc analysis with this. We also wanted ETL aut automation to simplify the development with low code uh, and minimize the risk of creating a black box of unexplained logic. We also wanted a semantic layer to create this kind of um, framework for different kinds of metrics and dimensions and make the different kinds of connections. A data catalog to uh, help the super users to find and evaluate different kinds of data points. Uh, a data lineage to make it easier for the business to understand the logic and, um, and the connections. And also documentation automation so we can minimize the time spent on documentation uh, in order for us to prioritize uh, more value creating activities. So we started this journey, like I mentioned, one year ago uh, in the late 2020. And in the beginning of 2021, we migrated our platform to Microsoft Azure uh, in order for us to gain uh, an increased scalability in the platform. And we also entered a partnership together with Time Extender and the Discovery Hub, uh, which handles everything from the data extraction with different kinds of data connections uh, into the transformation, but also creating a semantic uh, model so we can connect to any kind of uh, endpoint. And this is bound by uh, total transparency, which is one of the keynotes here. So we, we want different kinds of people in the organization, not just tech people, but also the business analysts, controllers, to be able to identify different kinds of steps in, in this process. So we don't have a black box so people don't understand what is going on in background, but being able to, in a visual way, present how uh, the data is connected. Um, cloud moving forward, so we have just started this analytics process was uh, a pilot project when it comes to moving to the cloud. And since then, we have also evaluating different ways of moving uh, other kinds of systems to the cloud. Uh, we have initiated an integration and API platform to, to, in a secure and efficient way, solve the integration challenge between systems, which is a prerequisite in, in the compliance of the master data initiative. Uh, we also have some uh, RPA processes uh, to robotize uh, uh, automated and repetitive uh, tasks. And we are continuously trying to add different kinds of analytic resources to this platform to fill the gap that lies ahead. Um, so the key learnings over this last year is that uh, we need to I think we need to evaluate the qualifications and mission when we initiate a project like this to think what is really interesting and what the organization needs, as there is no one solution fits all. Uh, we also have to evaluate our current uh, structure and solution uh, to identify what is missing and what we actually need and not being afraid of uh, removing anything and start from the beginning. Uh, and the last uh, learning is what I mentioned before that uh, I think we need to take a step back, think big, um, in order for us to get a solid structure that is sustainable and scalable, uh, but start small, because otherwise we can start doing different kinds of evaluations and uh, proof of concepts and so forth for one year, two years. And in two years, the organization has changed, the needs have changed. So start small, think big. Um, so we have just uh, started this journey and is uh, expanding rapidly uh, and constantly searching for new people, um, suppliers and vendors to help us on this journey. So if you have any questions or thoughts, just feel free to contact me here uh, or add me on LinkedIn uh, or just grab me uh, offstage. 
Um, thank you all for listening.